The UCLA Henry Samueli School of Engineering and Applied Science, with its distinguished faculty, is at the forefront of innovation, positioned to address the challenges of the 21st century. Ranked top 10 amongst public U.S. universities and top 15 in the world, the school attracts some of the best students, champions research and education that's multidisciplinary in nature, and conducts cutting-edge research that's responsive to the needs of society. With seven departments and the Institute for Technology Advancement, the school is also home to nine multi-million dollar interdisciplinary research centers, all funded by federal and private agencies. With eight startups and 29 patents last year alone, UCLA Engineering is putting knowledge to practice with innovations in critical areas like green and renewable energy, the smart grid, healthcare, water desalination, wireless sensing and networking, nanotechnology, and cybersecurity, just to name a few. We know that the energy problem is probably one of the most important problems for the mankind in the 21st century. And we engineers have the responsibility as well as the ability to solve that. So I'd like to be the one to help solving this problem. In the war against the world's reliance on fossil fuels, Professor James Liao is on the front lines, strategically plotting new and exciting ways to make biofuels out of things we haven't imagined possible. Sunlight is the ultimate energy source. And the best way to store sunlight is to store the energy into a carbon-carbon bound, which needs a carbon backbone. So where do we get the carbon? The best way, in my opinion, to get the carbon is through CO2 in the atmosphere. Professor Liao is developing a way to convert CO2, plentiful in our atmosphere, into fuel. It's the ultimate renewable energy source. We develop a method to harness the natural CO2 fixation capability of cells. But instead of letting the cell to grow its own cell mass, we now convert the fixed CO2 into a fuel, which is what we call butanol okay, or isobutanol, okay, which is a uh, very good uh, fuel property, better than ethanol. Liao uses a metabolic engineering approach to solve problems. In doing so, he's on his way to solving one of the biggest problems of all, our need for clean, sustainable energy. UCLA engineering faculty are leading broad efforts in many clean and renewable energy technologies. Professor Wurz is another example. Wind energy is a very exciting part of energy. If, if you're going to want to make a terawatt level impact, a huge impact, if you look at wind energy and you look at solar energy, those are the two that really have the potential to make a huge impact. Despite the growth of wind farms, they're only a minor player in the power landscape. Wurz wants to change that. Wind basically is like an airplane. When we built airplanes in the 1950s, they worked, they got from point A to point B, but they're terribly uncomfortable, they were inefficient, and now we're even seeing with planes right now, people are trying to make planes more efficient. So that's the same thing with wind energy. We still have the ability to grow in efficiency. One of Wurz's ideas is to use advanced plasma devices, similar to the ones he develops for spacecraft, to increase the harnessing power of wind turbines. By understanding plasma dynamics, I can extend the capabilities of these plasma devices, put them on these, these giant wind turbine blades, so it would be increasing the efficiency. Beyond wind, WERS is developing a new generation of solar thermal storage systems that can capture the energy from the sun and store it for later use. We're looking at ways of storing energy thermally that no one's ever looked at. What we do is we'll take a fluid and we'll store it in a supercritical state. Supercritical means that you take something, and you heat it up, and you also have it at high pressure. So now it's not a liquid and it's not a vapor, it's in what we call a supercritical state, which is a liquid vapor state. You can actually take these supercritical liquid and you can compress it to a very small volume. And then you basically don't need as much volume to store your energy. As Wurz sees it, the future of energy is already here and the road ahead holds endless possibilities. Most people look at smartphones simply as a communication gadget. 
Professor Deborah Estrin, on the other hand, sees them as an almost endless source of data, and the devices play a central role in the emerging area of participatory sensing. I began in this field at an incredibly interesting, exciting time for the inter internet. And just around that time as we were doing mobile sensing, mobile phones were getting more and more powerful. And so taking that notion of how powerful it is to be able to move measurement through the environment and that people were increasingly carrying around with them these smart sensors, it increasingly captured my attention as somebody who was interested in highly impactful, really scalable technologies to look at mobile phones as sensors and to look at this whole area of participatory sensing as a way in which to do both social innovation and technological innovation uh, hand in hand. Now, Professor Estrin is leading a major initiative called mHealth, or Mobile Health, where cell phones are integrated into more personalized health care that benefits patients and providers alike. We started looking at making use of participatory sensing, not only to capture data about things in the environment, things in your city, uh, but to capture data about ourselves. And that is particularly relevant when it comes to individuals managing their health and wellness, particularly around chronic disease. Using a smartphone coupled with the patient's own reporting, doctors and patients have a much richer picture of responses to treatment. Professor Estrin is also incorporating participatory sensing principles in an ambitious computer science learning project with the Los Angeles Unified School District called Mobilize. Education is one of our biggest needs in this country to improve, to return to where we were, to suppress where we were so that we can uh, sustain an active economy and also just continue to bring technologies that improve uh, quality of life for people around the world. Whether it's breaking new ground in mobile technology and the internet, harnessing the power of the wind and the sun, or the conversion of bacteria into biofuels, UCLA Engineering is leading bold new initiatives in a frontier full of promising possibilities and taking us along for the ride.